Uh, can we go ahead and play the video? Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. It's that time of year again. It's the Mardi Gras outreach in New Orleans. It's coming soon, February 9th. So this is our first call and our final call for you to be a part of this great outreach. Okay, you heard it. This is our first and last call. We leave in just under a month, so we've got some spots left on the team. If you are someone who is passionate about evangelism, this is a great place to get plugged in and just get to talk and spread the love of Jesus for three jam-packed days. But if you are someone who needs to be challenged, come and watch God be strong in your weakness. I am an introvert by nature, but when God called me on this outreach seven years ago, I was just willing to be obedient, not having any idea what I was doing. And he just completely opened my eyes to how simple it is to just share your testimony and talk about Jesus and what he did for you and what he has for them. These people are broken and hurting and they are running. And what better to run towards than the gospel in a place where the devil thinks that he's in complete control. So we're gonna go out there and show him otherwise. Uh, if you have questions, if you want information, Chris and I will be down here after lecture. So come and ask your questions. We have that flyer that you can take. The QR code will connect you directly to me. And now I have the very distinct honor and privilege to welcome a amazing woman to the stage. If you can help me give a huge welcome to our powerhouse of a prayer warrior, Miss Renee. Let's go, girl. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen, everybody, praise God, you can sit, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Father, what an honor to be able to speak for, for Jesus, what an honor, Father, I give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, it's all yours, Lord, Father God, you are preparing us to win souls. It's not a joke, Father. It's real. It's real, God. There's people in darkness. They need to see the light of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender. Holy Spirit, come in this place today. Reveal Jesus. Let these young people realize the importance of preparation and living right before you, Lord. Father, fill my mouth. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. Touch their lives. You get the glory. And I give you all the praise. It's all his. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You know, you can put up the first slide, please. You know, when they just did that, um, they just did that uh, little slide they just did about Mardi Gras. We don't realize how God is like, he's just egging us on so that we can 
do the works of God Almighty so that he can move through us. We can see people healed and delivered. We have such an opportunity. We have such an opportunity. But guys, there's preparation. You want to walk in spiritual warfare? You got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. The Holy Spirit didn't bring you to CFNI for, for joking. I mean, you may find your husband and your wife here, but I'm going to tell you that is not God's first priority. You may want a girlfriend, boyfriend, praise the Lord, whatever, entrepreneur, I want to be a millionaire. Yes, yeah, show me how. You know what? You better be on your knees fasting and praying. You better be in the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit is preparing you for souls. I don't care if you're a millionaire. You will be, he's the one that's looking at you. He's the one you have to answer to. Think about that. Think about that. Do you know that you're being prepared? When you're dealing with a situation, when you're driving to a parking space and that parking space says staff, and you're a student and you park in that place, do you know that you're missing a training of discipline? That might sound really stupid, but do you know that you're missing an opportunity to be disciplined? When you're messing with the clock and you clock and then you walk out, you're missing an opportunity for God to discipline you. The more he disciplines you, the more his fire gets on the inside of you. You want the fire of God? Oh, everybody wants to cast out demons. Everybody wants to lay hands on the sick. Everybody wants to see healings. But nobody wants to pay the price. You're going to pay the price for the anointing. You hear me? You will pay the price for the anointing of God. You want the anointing of God on your life? You're going to fast. You're going to pray. You're going to find time alone with God. You're going to be crying out to God. You're going to forget about friends. You're going to forget about TV. You're going to forget about your phone because the Holy Spirit is pulling you. He's not pulling you for games. He's not pulling you for games. Now why? Why isn't God pulling us for games? Would you... Go to the second slide, please. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 12th verse. We're going to go through some scriptures. We got to do this quick. It's not like we have a whole bunch of time, but God's going to do what he wants done. And it'll be in the amount of time that he wants it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Ephesians 6 chapter and the 12th verse. People think this is, people don't believe in demons. People don't believe that we need to talk about demons. Hmm, let me tell you something. Yes, you do. This is 2024. You hear me? This is 2024. These are wicked days. It's not days to play. All you got to do is flip your phone on and you can see that. You guys are really smart. You're not dumb. You are very smart. The Holy Spirit is the one that made you alive at this time because he knew what he put on the inside of you. There's a burning fire on the inside of you. And that fire, if you don't channel that thing in the right direction, you're going to fall. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. This is not against your friend, but against rulers, against the powers, against the worldly forces of this darkness, and against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. You're not fighting people. You're not fighting your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your wife or your husband. It's not about your job. It's not even about your body. I can't get up in the morning. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I can't go to pray. Oh, I don't know what it is. Oh, I hurt my foot. I can't do that. Oh, my finger hurts. Oh, my finger hurts. Come on, somebody. You know how that's, you know that. But we're going to cast out demons. 
But we're going to cast out demons? You know, I'm going to tell you something. How many of you in here were brought up in Christian homes? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How many of you were not brought up in a Christian home? I am like, what? That amazes me. You guys, let me tell you something. I was not brought up in a Christian home. I was brought up in pure darkness. My father was a murderer. My mother was a, uh, she had some questionable situations. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. God knows all things. There was all kinds of stuff going on in my house. All kinds. I had a brother that was selling guns in from my garage. He was 14. Now this was way back in the 70, 1970s. There was so much darkness in my home. When I accepted Jesus Christ, my mother, it was one o'clock in the morning, my mother put me out on the street and said, you don't have a mother no more, get out. People think this kind of stuff doesn't happen in America. Yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. She put me on the street one in the morning. I was 18 years old, totally clueless. I just got saved. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know why my mom was acting like that. I walked to the YWCA downtown about five, six miles from my house and got a room because I was going to college at, at, at YSU. <laughs> and you guys think, oh, I got a headache. I got a headache. Oh, praise God. But you still going to cast out demons. Amen. How are you going to cast out demons? You can't even love the dorm person that's in the room with you. You can't even pray for the one that's in the room with you that's going through something, the one that's being tormented. You can't even pray for each other. You can't even sit beside each other because your color is the wrong color. You're the wrong color. The wrong color. No, her family, her family makes more money. No, I can't, I can't sit next to her. Excuse me? But you're going to go out into the world and cast out demons? No, you won't. You know what's going to happen? Hmm, okay, Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, this is not on the thing. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Acts. Oh, you think you're going to cast out demons? Okay, I'm going to show you what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord does, the Bible doesn't lie. The Bible doesn't lie. Praise God. Look at, Acts, look at Acts 19. Look at Acts 19. Look at the 13th verse. Okay, now this was Paul. Okay, now he's out there ministering. Okay, and then out of the blue, the Bible says, but some traveling Jewish exorcists also tried to invoke. Do me a favor. Can you put this scripture, um, Acts 19, in um, New King James Version on, on, script, on the on the thing for me, please. I'm sorry, I hope you can do it. I, 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 it's totally not what I had intended to do. But I'm reading from the uh, Tree of Life version, so it's a little different. But anyway, I'm gonna read it. But some traveling exorcists, Jewish exorcists, that means they're casting out demons, also tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus. And they said, I charge you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And these were seven sons of Sceva. He was a priest, okay? And he had seven sons. And these seven sons called themselves, they're going to go out here because their father was a priest. They said, well, we're going to cast out some demons too. Mm-hmm, praise the Lord. Okay, all right. But the Bible says, but the evil spirit answered them, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you in Jesus? Are you really serving him? Are you really serving him? Are you hiding? You sneaking around doing things that nobody sees but him? What are you doing on your phones? What are you doing when nobody's with you? 
What are you doing when you go home from um, CF&I on, on, on uh, holidays? What are you doing? What are you really doing? Are you still praying? Are you still seeking God? Are you having sex? And you're not married? Are you taking a little whiff of drugs? Are you doing pornography? Guys, this is so important. The Holy Spirit is not going to flow through a filthy vessel. You got to repent. You got to live right. And you can fake it with people, but you can't fake it with him. There ain't going to be no anointing on your life if you're not living right. I am not going to, I am not going to lie to you. I am not, mm -mm. you know, when they talk about grace, you know, yeah, we have grace. Stop demonizing grace. Stop it. Stop demonizing grace. Yes, we have grace. Yes, we do. It also means we need to repent. Get our hearts right with Jesus Christ. You've had so much word this week. So much. I was wondering, Holy Spirit, what in the world? What can I tell them about spiritual warfare? But there's a preparation. Let me tell you something. When you go out there to Mardi Gras, huh, you go out there when they're dealing in voodoo and stuff. Do you think that those demons don't know what you're doing? Do you think that those demons don't know what you're doing? They know what you're doing. They see you. I'm not trying to make you scared. I'm trying to show you what is required. Why do you think we have so many ministers falling? You do not have to fall. I don't care what nobody says. We always say, well, you know, all of us say it. I've said it myself. Well, you know, you know, we know that we have grace and, and you know, God forgives. Yes, he does. Every time you sin, you lose, lose some of your anointing. It's just like a balloon. You know how a balloon, when it gets a little pin prick in it, and it just goes out slowly. And you'll be up there and you'll be dancing and singing. And you'll think there'll be so much fire and it's just you. Ain't no anointing. It's just you. It's just you. Because you left Jesus back there. The Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance. God's not going to take his gift from you. You might be prophesying. Are you proper lying? You're either going to live right before God or you're not. Don't stand in the pulpit of God and act like you're a Christian and you're not. Because you are hurting the body of Christ. The Bible says every time you do that, you are literally crucifying Jesus afresh. You're crucifying him. All because you want to get your flesh on. And you might be in a situation, guys, and you might be battling. You might be battling for your life. God, I can't get out of this. I can't stop doing this. Well, get on your knees and cry out to God. Cry, you guys, listen to me. You know when I was in sixth grade? There was this boy that kept beating on me. He was beating me. Now, guys, listen, I wasn't brought up in a Christian home, okay? So some of these stories you hear, praise the Lord, I was a sinner. Sinners sin, okay? Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I was in sixth grade, and this boy, he just kept on beating me. Every time we got out of class, he was punching me. We're trying to go across the McGuffey Bridge, and he's pushing me, and he's pushing me. And one day... Honest to God, I, I just, I don't know, a demon took over me or something. <laughs> I was in sixth grade, guys. I turned, that boy's name was Andrew, Adrian Scott. Can you believe I remember his name? I'm a, I could be your great grandmother. I'm not, I'm not a little chicken. I'm, I'm, I'm up there. And 
I can remember his name. Do you know that he, he shoved me and he was cussing? I picked this boy up. I literally turned to him. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. I literally lifted him up and was holding him over the bridge. I was going to drop him. I was in sixth grade. Do you hear me? I was holding him and I was just about to let him go. He would have been killed. I was in sixth grade. And this girl, her, I can't remember her name. Her last name was Duke. She was a pastor's daughter. And she said, Cheryl, put him down. My first name is Cheryl. And it's like I shook. It's like it, it brought me back to whatever. And I put him down and I, I just kept crying and crying. I thought to myself, I'm in sixth grade. And I almost killed somebody. I had so much anger in me. People deal with pornography and all these other things. I dealt with anger. I had a serious anger problem. I was angry. I hated everybody. I had no friends. Didn't want anybody around me. Didn't want anybody to hug me. I just, just stay back. Stay back. Just leave me alone. Seriously. I was so mean. I hated being alive. I used to shake my fists up to God. Can you imagine this? He could have struck me dead. Seriously. Seriously. This really happened. I would shake my fists up to him. Say, why you put me on this earth? I hated being alive. I suffered so bad as a kid. You guys, my mom used to put me in the, in the, in the, uh, in New York, we have, we have second level, first level, basement, and cellar. And in the cellar, there's no floors. It's just like dirt floors. And we were living in, in, in New York, in Brooklyn. And my mom, there were seven of us. We were bad. But anyway, when she got sick of us, she would put us in this, in this cellar. Now, we were little kids. She would open the door, put us in the cellar, and flick off the light. And we would be in there screaming because it was pitch black. Just pitch black. We would be in there screaming, and she would be outside the door laughing. She thought it was hilarious. You don't know what abuse is. You got Christian parents. They're not perfect. Do you pray for your mom and your dad? Do you pray for them? Have they made you mad? Have you repented? There's no perfect parents. And my mom wasn't saved. She got saved before she passed, but she wasn't saved. When I see the Christian kids that are coming up in so many, and then you have so many issues. If you have a Christian parent, somehow, some way, you know that you can cry out to God. You got to cry out to God, guys. There's a reason you're here at CF and I. Okay, can we please go to the second, the second, the third slide. Jesus, the son of God, is our greatest example. How did he prepare to deal with warfare? Now, I'm going quick because it's already 1129. In Revelation 1, 12 and 16 you guys, if, if I don't, you know, write the scriptures down, because if I don't read them, if I don't have time, because I want us to have time for prayer. So um, I may not read all the scriptures, okay? But make sure you write the ones down. You can go to the, uh, the fourth slide now. We're talking about preparation. In Luke 2 and 41 to 50, 52, Jesus was 12 years old. You don't have to be old for God to get a hold of you. You don't have to be old. There's no, you have no excuse. Do you know if you were to stand before the Lord, you have no excuse? 
especially if you have Christian parents, you have no excuse. The Bible says that he left his throne. In Revelation, let's just look at Revelation first chapter. Look at, look at this. I just want to read this about Jesus. Revelation, the first chapter. And, and look at the 12th verse. Then I turned, this was John talking. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden uh, candlesticks. In, excuse me, in the midst of the candlesticks, I saw one like the son of man, clothed in a robe down to his feet with a golden belt wrapped around his chest. His head and his hair were, like, were white like wool white like snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, fern, um, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of rushing waters. This is where he left so he could come to earth for us. This is the man. This is God's son. This is who he is and was he left heaven to come down as a baby for us. And we don't even appreciate it. We don't appreciate what Jesus did for us. We mock him. We watch TV shows that mock Jesus. We're sitting there laughing. How in heaven's name can you sit and laugh at somebody mocking Jesus who died for you? You better flick that channel. Your eyes are cameras. When you set something before your eyes and you look at something, you've taken a picture. It's like a camera. It's in there. It's in your soul now. So you can be praying and seeking God and you're in the sanctuary and you're jumping, you're praising God and all of a sudden, pew, that junk will come right across your mind. You say, where did that come from? Well, well, what were you looking at? What were you listening to? Where's your head when you're in church? Are you undressing somebody? Praise the Lord. Amen. Where is your head? You got to know that every thought has to come under subjection to the Holy Ghost. It's not saying you're not going to be tempted. It's when you yield to temptation, James says. That's when it becomes sin. And if you're looking at junk on your phones, if you're looking at it, and you're sitting there, hmm, and you're flipping, and you're looking, and you're looking, and then you say, oh, Jesus, forgive me. And then you're looking, and you're looking. Come on, somebody. Come on, who are we playing with here? You either want Jesus or you don't. If you don't want him, why are you here? Why are you faking? Don't fake it. Live right before God. Whenever I know that I have to speak, when Katie asked me two months, it was back in October, I think it was October or November, you don't understand the gravity that hits me when I know I have to speak to young people. I know the hell I went through growing up and had nobody I could talk to, nobody that I respected, nobody that could answer my questions. You are in a school. You can go to any of your teachers. You can go to the leaders. You can talk to them. You can tell them if you need prayer. Do you realize how blessed you are? You are so blessed. Are you taking it for granted? Jesus blessed you to be here. Some of you battled to get the money 
and you were crying out and people were praying for you and the Holy Spirit supplied the money for you to come and then when you're in class, all you're doing is flipping through your phone, you need to repent. You need to repent before God. You guys, you got to live right. You got to live right. God is preparing you. God may be a, a preparing you to be an apostle. Maybe you're going to have churches all over the place. What you going to do? Be an apostle that gets in the darkness, sleeping with babies, sleeping with little boys, sleeping with little girls, raping them and then hiding them and then paying them off? Is that what you're going to do? Come on, somebody. You know that's happening in the body. It's dark. It's dark. It's not of God. It's darkness. And it's sin. And I don't play with sin. I'm sorry. Praise God. I'm sorry. I've been through too much. Ain't been, been there, done that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Luke. Look at Luke. Look at the second chapter of Luke. Now, Jesus, 12 years old. It's already 1137. Jesus was 12 years old. That this is how he was prepared. From 12. Remember when he was sitting with the, uh, I'm not going to read it. Okay, okay, guys, but you can read it. It's 41 through 52. He was sitting with the elders in the temple, and he was asking them questions and listening to them. He was 12 years old. They were amazed at this little young kid. But his parents found him after three days because they had gone on. They were going home and they realized Jesus wasn't with them. And they returned and the Bible says that Jesus was subject to them. So from the age of 12 to the age of 30, he obeyed his parents. He didn't say, the Bible does not say his parents were perfect. We don't know what went on in that time. The scripture doesn't say. But he obeyed, he submitted himself. Jesus was being prepared. Jesus was the son of God, but he didn't come here to walk this earth as the son of God. He came as a man to show us how to live a Christian life. He's our perfect example. Look at Luke 4. Okay, so after Jesus was baptized... The Bible says that the Spirit led him, Luke 4 and uh, 1 through 13, okay? It, he was intentional. Would you go to the fourth slide, please? Yeah, you got it. Okay. He had intentional obedience. Jesus, when the Holy Spirit led him to go to fast, Jesus went and fasted 40 days. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hmm. Does that just mean New Testament? Hmm. Who says the Old Testament doesn't count anymore? That's not of God. It counts. This word is the word of God, period. Whether you accept it or not. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's still the word of God from cover to cover. Hallelujah. It's still his word, whether you believe it or not. Demons are still real because the Bible says it, whether you believe it or not. Angels are real because the Bible says it, whether you believe it or not. We can live right because the Bible says it, whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not, you got to believe this thing. You got to believe it. You got to believe it when people are laughing at you and mocking you and telling you you're too loud. Or, oh, look at her now. Oh, and they're making fun of you and calling you names. That's all right. The word of God is still real. Let them laugh at you. Let them laugh at you. Let them make fun of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I learned you say praise the Lord, Renee, no matter what. You think I don't see what's going on? You think I don't see people when they're making fun of me and laughing at me? I know I'm weird. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care. I can't be but who I am. Who are you? You got to know who you are. Don't try to be somebody else. Who are you? 
When the Holy Ghost is dealing with you and you want to cry, why are you ashamed to cry? When the Holy Ghost is dealing with you and telling you to shout, why are you ashamed to shout? Oh, you know, I might be a little loud. So? Jesus, let me tell you something. When Jesus was praying and the disciples saw him praying and they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. What do you think they saw? What do you think they saw? They saw something. You think they saw Jesus saying, oh, Father, oh, yes, Lord. You think that's what they saw? No, they saw Jesus crying out to God. And Jesus was showing us what we need to do. You guys, everybody should be praying at 7 in the morning. You have no excuse. I don't want to hear that you're tired. The Bible says that this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. If you're not praying and fasting, you will not be free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will not be able to set others free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power of God's going to come by you seeking him. Not by you trying to get a name for yourself. Not by you trying to let everybody see who you are. Show how much power you have. We don't have no power. What power? It's not us. In us dwells no good thing. It's him. It's him. And I'm going to tell you something. The thing about me, and I know I make people mad. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak, speak the truth. You know why? You know why? Because I got to answer to him. I promised God when I took this job, Lord, you know me. I said, what you tell me to say, I'm going to say. That's why I'll come against masturbation. I'll come against pornography. I'll come against lesbianism. I'll come against abortion. Do you know that my mom told me when I was 12 years old? 12 years old. Imagine this. My mom told me. I had a twin brother. And my mom and my grandmother used a hanger to get my brother out of her body. And then they, they buried my brother in the, uh, in the backyard. Praise the Lord. America. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And there ain't no shame in that. How could you say something like that? Because I know somebody needs to hear it. I don't care what nobody says. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. I am a vessel of him. I don't care if people don't like me. Oh, I might cry sometimes. But I don't care if people don't like me. God knows I don't. I wouldn't trade the presence of God that I have. I wouldn't trade what he's put inside me for nothing. No amount of money, nothing is going to make me trade what he's put on the inside of me. Nobody has anything that I want. I don't want none of it. I don't want the houses. I don't want the hair. I don't want none of it. I don't want it. I want him. You got to be like that. You have to say, you might have to say no to money. I turned down three record deals. The blood of Jesus Christ. You guys have no idea. You have no idea. You're going to have to make choices in your life. You're going to have opportunities to do dark, dark things. What are you going to do? Are you going to submit to it? Young people, you got to make some choices with your life. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Pray in the spirit. Everybody pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Can we get some music, some worship? Is it possible to get worship? To get worship? Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit.
Who in here is not filled with the Holy No. Who in here is not saved? If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to come up here. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of a speaking in other tongues, you need to come up here. You need to be speaking in other tongues. You need to be speaking in other tongues. You need to be speaking in other tongues. Now, God is not going to come down, grab your mouth, and make you talk. Okay? Praise the Lord. That's reality. He's not going to come and grab your mouth. You have to open up your mouth and begin to speak. It's by faith. And as you begin to speak, hallelujah, the, but the Spirit of God will speak through you. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, His Spirit is in you. His Spirit is in you. And so now, in the name of Jesus, I just command you to speak. Close your eyes. Don't think about who's near you. Don't think about what they're saying. Don't think about who might. Just forget about all that mess. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Pray in tongues. Move your mouth in the name of Jesus. The Bible says out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It'll flow because God's word is real. Begin to speak. Speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name, Lord, you said we would lay our hands on the, on the sick. You said we would lay our hands. They would be filled. Lord, let them be filled. Move your mouths. Guys, be bold in the name of Jesus Christ. Be bold in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke fear off these young people. I take authority over the spirit of fear right now. I take authority over it. You lying spirit. I rebuke intimidation. I rebuke timidity. I take authority over it right now. Open your mouth. Make your mouth. Move your mouth. And let the breath come forth. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. Handala masaka yote nishki atakai. How are you going to cast out demons if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost? How are you going to cast out demons? How are you going to lay hands on the sick? If you don't pray in the Spirit, you got to be filled up. Lord, fill her. Fill her, Lord. Fill her, fill her, fill her. That's right. Pray. That's right. Pray it out. Be loud. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command it to come forth. You said out of his belly would flow rivers. Lord, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. I rebuke all timidity. And Holy Spirit, I pray where he's wrestling, I pray you set him free, Holy Spirit. Set him free. Set him free in the name of Jesus. I say, Kandalaman de Korobo Sotarabakai, Esakate Nenia Sotoro Morakani, Erabakandala Maratokonda. Pray loud, guys. Don't be embarrassed. Pray, pray. If, if we have any um, um, leaders over there that would be willing to come and pray, please. Asi kandala marato kosotoro morata kandarani era bandelo mora bakase arebo kundala mikera. We gotta be bold. We gotta be bold, guys. We gotta be bold. Ida misketo rabakate ne sekita ne ora bakande lo mokungu ataniski uri abakande. The Lord is setting you free. He's setting you free in the In the name of Jesus, Father, 
Father, thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 I thank you for what you're doing. Holy Spirit, I pray. Holy Spirit, he's so hungry. Father, he feels like he has such a long way to go. No, he doesn't. All he has to do is believe you. All he has to do is pray. All he has to do is read the word. Father, set him on fire for you, Lord. Set him on fire for you, Lord. Set him on fire for you, Lord. Set him on fire, Father. The Lord said, you asked him why he brought you. He said, what am I doing here? What is this? What is this? The Lord said, you keep praying. You keep seeking him and he's going to show you. You keep seeking him. Keep seeking him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
know it's you.
It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 